So today I'm going to take a look at the Vim Nerd Tree plugin, which is the de facto standard way to have a file tree within Vim. So if you're new to this channel, remember to subscribe and ding a little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm aiming for a thousand subs and any help be really appreciated. So now that's out of the way, let's get started. Good afternoon everyone and welcome back to the channel. So this is the GitHub page for Vim Nerd Tree. We're not going to go over everything right now, just installation, and then we'll come back to this a bit later in the video. So obviously you can do manual installation, but you're never going to do that. So the way that you're probably going to do it is with Vimplug or Vundle. So those are the two blocks for those bits of code there. So in my VimRC, I'm using Vimplug. So that will just look like this line right here within my Vimplug block. And I'm also using NVim, so the path is slightly different for Vimplug than it would be for regular Vim. So I've got some extra plugins that play together with Nerdtree. We're not going to go over those ones in this video. I'll save those for a separate one. This one, we're just going to go over the basics of Nerdtree, some configuration, and also how to basically use it. So before we get into actually navigating through this node tree. There are some cool things that I would like to add, or at least I have added anyway. So I like having a key bound to actually open up node tree. So I've got that bound to control F. So for me, that is just a normal mode map. And then for any control map within Vim, you put them in with this uh, angle bracket thingy, and then the letter that you're gonna actually bind it with, with the control key. And then within the block that you're running, you would run colon nerd tree toggle. That is how you actually open up nerd tree. So if we run that without running it as a hotkey, we just run nerd tree toggle. Then that will just quit out that nerd tree we had open on the side. So I've actually got my nerd tree to open up every single time that I open up Vim automatically. So to do that, that's very, very simple. So you just run a auto command on Vim enter on any single file type, and then you just put the nerd tree command in. This command under here, so what that will do, I'm not gonna go through all of that. This is just directly copied from the GitHub page. What it will do is if the nerd tree window or the nerd tree split is the only split that's open, then it will automatically quit out of the Vim instance. So if we quit this now, what would have happened by default is we would just be left with this nerd tree. But what's gonna happen here is it's just gonna quit out like it normally would. So we do that now and bam, that's now quit. So now we're actually gonna go over what you can do with the nerd tree. So this is actually acting as a separate split. So the way that you navigate between these is the same way that you navigate with splits normally in Vim. So I've actually bound it to a set of keys that makes it a lot easier to navigate between them. So for me, I can just do control H, but that is not the normal binding. So control H to go to the left, control L to go to the right. It's a little bit more complicated with the default binding in Vim. I'll see if I can find where my fix for it is in here. So it should be way down the bottom somewhere. So I'll skip ahead to when I find it. So here we've got my shortcutting for split navigation. So I'm just mapping control H to control W and then H because for some reason the default binding, you have to press control W and then the direction you want to navigate with it. I don't know why it's like that. Either way, if you put these bindings in, then you'll be able to navigate between splits far, far easier than the default bindings. So basically the way you navigate in nerd tree is very, very similar to the way you would do it with Vim. So J and K to go up and down, you can press H to go left and right, that won't open anything. This will just move the cursor around. So that's not gonna do anything too useful. But if we press O, that will then open up this directory. Press O again, that'll close it. You can do the same thing with enter and enter again. So I don't remember all the keys right now. So luckily we have this help menu here. So if we press the question mark, that will open up the help menu. So there's a bunch of different things we can do in this. So we can open up stuff in a new tab. I'm not exactly sure what a new tab is going to exactly mean. So if we do that, open that up like that. Oh, okay. So Nerd Tree actually supports tabbing, oddly enough. Okay. Uh, I don't know how to navigate between these tabs. Is there a... I, I've never seen that before, actually. So let's see, open a new tab, open a new, ch yeah, I've never seen that before. So we're just gonna quit out of that. Can I just, okay, so if you just quit normally, that will let you quit. I don't know how to navigate between them because it doesn't seem to 
list how to do that in here. So if someone knows, let me know. So you can also do things like if you press GO, that will open up a preview. So I don't exactly know what that's gonna do either because most of the time what I'll do with this is I'll just navigate up and down and then open up the file I need directly. There's nothing else I really need to do. So that opens it up like that. And how do we get back then? So if we quit out of that, does that quit out of Vim entirely? Yes, it does. Okay, so is it really a preview then? I don't know. Maybe I didn't press it quick enough or something and that made it so it didn't actually open up like a proper preview. I don't know. So the other things you can do are you can open up files within a split. So that will just open up a file in a normal split like you'd normally expect it to. So if you wanna have this file here, this vimrc, and then let's say we want get pip.py in another split. So that will open up a split and that will just act like a normal split. So if you've got my bindings for navigating around, you can then press control and K to go up, control J to go down, and you can go back to the nerd tree as well and nothing too crazy there and just acts like a normal split. So you can scroll through this and do all your normal Vim stuff with it. So I don't ever really do that. I like to modify one file at a time. If I can work out how that tabbing works, maybe there's something to that, but I don't know because I've never even seen that feature before. So with this, that was just opening up a split with I, but I guess that just picks horizontal split maybe? I don't know how that specifies which split to use. Maybe it'll judge it by the last split. But if you want to open up a vertical split, then you can just press S or, or maybe that means open up a horizontal split. They've just got their documentation a little off. Obviously it's not going to be perfect. So there's a bit of work that needs to be done in random places with documentation. So if you do want to help out, I'll leave the GitHub down below so you can actually make it more clear. I'm guessing that this open split is supposed to say open H split, but it just says open split right now. So those were just for file node stuff. So you can also do stuff with directories. You can open and close a node. So if we press enter like we did before, then quit out of the help menu. So we press enter, that will open up that directory, but we can also do the same thing with O. So nothing too special there. Now that I think about it, I probably should have opened up screen key and that would have made this a bit easier. But we're already six minutes into this video, so we'll work with it as it is for now. Maybe next time I'll use screen key. So you can open up a directory in a new tab. Once again, I don't know how to navigate between the tabs, so I'm not gonna do that. If someone knows, let me know. So like a normal file tree, you actually have access to bookmarks as well. I don't ever bookmark stuff, but the way we work with these are with O. So normally like you do with O, you can open up a bookmark like you can do with a file and you can do with the directory. You can also use enter to do a custom open. By default, I'm guessing that will just, like with the other ones, just default back to this regular open, but I'm not entirely sure. So once again, you have previews as well. I don't know how to quit out of the preview, so I don't know if it's really a preview because it seems to act like a regular file, but I might be wrong there. And you can open stuff up in a separate tab as well. Once again, don't know how the tabs are working, so I don't know how to navigate between them. And okay, to actually add bookmarks is not within this bookmark section. We have to go down a bit further and it is under this part called bookmark commands. So you can just run colon bookmark, the name of the thing you want to bookmark and that's how that works. And there's some other bookmark commands in here, like you've got a command to open a bookmark, clear all the bookmark, clear a bookmark, read, write, edit, and reveal a bookmark. And bookmark to root, which I'm not sure what that does. So I can't be certain of telling you exactly what it does. Anyway, so you've also got basic tree navigation stuff. So if we press P, that was quitting out of it. That's not what I want to do. We press P, that will go up to the top of the tree. And let's see, so what was the other one? Lowercase p, that will go to the parent. I keep pressing the wrong key. So if we open up this, actually something that has stuff in it, let's open up this one, I guess. We press p, that will just navigate up to the parent directory, I guess. You also have the option of jumping to the first child of the directory you're in. So we're in the home directory right now. So if we press capital K, that will jump to the first child. If we press capital J, that will jump to the last child. So that's fairly, fairly simple. And if we press control with J or K, that will jump between the siblings. So that's similar to just scrolling up and down with 
the regular J and K keys, so there's not really any difference between just pressing K to go up or pressing Control K to go up. So there's not really any point for that binding to be there, but if you have any interest in using it, I guess, then it's it's there anyway. But because you can just scroll up with J and K, there's not really any point to also add the control keys in there. It's just an extra key you have to press and you're not really getting anything out of it. So what else do we have in here? So there's some basic file system stuff you can do in here. So if you press C, you can change the tree root to the selected directory. So I assume that would just CD you into whichever directory you press C on. So if we press C on the downloads directory, for example, then yeah, that will then change the directory that we are using for my nerd tree to that directory. So the other stuff you can do in here so if you press U, the lowercase u, you can move the tree root up a directory. So that will say I'm in the downloads directory like I was. If I pressed U, that would have taken me back to my home directory. If you press capital U, that will move the tree root up a directory, but leave the old tree root open. So I assume that it would move your directory, but keep the nerd tree within the same place. That's cool. So you can refresh the directory that you're hovering over, which is cool. So if you change something with that directory and it doesn't change within nerd tree, then you can just press lowercase r. If you press capital R, that will refresh the current root. So it doesn't mean the current root of the system, it means the current root of your nerd tree. So in this situation, the current root of my nerd tree is my home directory. So if I pressed capital R, then that would refresh my home directory. And what else did we have in here? So you can also show a menu. What does that do? Ah, oh, that will let you show a menu of the different bindings that you can do. So if you want to use this menu to actually modify stuff as well, then that is also an option. And you can just press escape to quit out of that. I Maybe you can press Q as well, but I know that escape works. Should we try that before I go into anything else? You press, you need the node tree open and you press M when the help menu isn't open. Maybe? Okay, now it's not working. Interesting. Okay, I don't know why that's not working. It is M, yeah? Yeah, it is. Okay, I don't know why that didn't work then. So you can CD and that will change the directory like you would expect a CD to do. And if you press a capital CD, that will change the tree root to wherever you actually CD to. So the other one will just change the current working directory to the selected directory. So there's some other basic stuff that you can do, like you can hide certain files, you can hide bookmarks, you can hide files in general, you can f actually do file filters, and that's pretty much everything. So Cube will quit out of nerd tree, but so will your binding for toggling the node tree. And you can zoom in on the node tree with A or something. Oh, okay, no, that will actually hide this other one. It's not a zoom. I don't know why that says zoom. That's not what zoom means. Anyway, so if we press capital A, that will hide our main thing we're working with so we can just see the node tree. So in the GitHub, there were a couple of things that I didn't add to my VMRC that might interest you. So if we go right down to the bottom below the installation, so if you want to open up the nerd tree automatically when there are no startup files selected, so if you open up your Vim install and you don't actually give it a file to work with, then it will open up the nerd tree automatically. You can use this. And let's see, what if I am work what if I'm opening a saved session? I'm not sure what a saved session is. I've never worked with that. But if you're in that situation, then you can use this command. How can I open Nerdtree automatically when Vim starts opening on a directory? If you didn't know, you can actually open up Vim with a directory as the input, so you can actually modify that. If you want to open up Nerdtree automatically when you do that, then you can use this command. This is just how to actually bind Nerdtree to a function or to a, a key binding. Then you also saw this one where I bound Nerdtree to actually close when it was the last thing open. And I think that's pretty much everything for this. Okay, so you may have noticed these little arrows along the side here. I don't know if you paid much attention to them. They're a little small with my current font size. So if I zoom in a bit, you can see them a bit better. But if you don't like the arrows that are here, so if we press that, that will actually change it to a down arrow. So that will indicate that that is the directory that is open right there. If 
for whatever reason, you don't want arrows to be there. Like, I don't know, maybe you want some other symbols that you like for whatever particular reason, then you can modify those with these two lines in here. So if you just drop those into your VimRC and just change what is in this string in here, then that will basically just let you modify those. So I think that's pretty much everything for the basics of Vim Nerdtree. So if you like this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. If you want me to go over some other stuff with Nerdtree, like how to do syntax stuff with Git or how to do dev icons and the reason dev icons are pretty cool, let me know down below and I'll happily do them. I'm probably going to do them anyway, so even if you don't let me know them, the videos are still probably going to come out. Anyway, so if you want to see those videos when they come out, remember to subscribe and ding a little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. Any help would be really appreciated. Down below I've got my library link and my Discord link and also all of my support links. So if you want to support the channel, you can give me money on Patreon or anything like that. But don't worry, because all of the content will still be available for free, even if you don't feel like doing that. And up on that corner, I've got the playlist that this video's in, so go check that out if you want to see other Vim videos. I've actually got a Vim dedicated playlist now, so if you want to just watch Vim videos because you want to copy my configuration, or maybe you want to try some other stuff with Vim that you're maybe interested in looking at, you can check that out. And also, I've got my Twitter and my Mastodon, so go check those out if you want to actually get proper video updates, because YouTube can never actually be trusted to push them to anyone. And I think that's pretty much everything for me, so I'm out.